So again, my name is Keisha Carter. I am the organizer of EIN, and I'm super excited for having an amazing speaker for today, Jay Fairbrother. So Jay will discuss how to create a high-impact six-figure program revenue. But before he comes to our virtual stage, we want to talk about what EIN is and how you can get the most out of everything that EIN offers. So first and foremost, Entrepreneurs International Network is an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education that can help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we will have education, networking session, and during our Q&As, we have Gratitude Circle, where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. We also have an app called Entrepreneurs International Network. And to download them on your mobile phones, just head into Google Play or App Store and find Entrepreneurs, I-N-T-L dot network to get access to a lot of other pieces of education. And if you go to our official website, eintalks.com, you will be able to see the recording of all the past events that we've had. Plus, you will be able to take a peek on our upcoming events and register there. So I highly recommend that you download our app and visit our website so you can get access to all the information that I just shared. So today's event will run for 90 minutes and we'll have our speaker give his talk for 45 minutes and you will receive a private chat reminders of the time left for your talk. After that, we'll have a 15 minutes question and answer portion by the audience. And lastly, we'll give another 15 minutes for our audience to share their takeaways and their gratitude to our speaker. And after that, we'll be wrapping up and close the event by 5.30 p.m. Pacific. And with that, let's go to our amazing speaker today, Jay. Jay Fairbrother, the mastermind guy, is a serial entrepreneur and business coach with experience starting buying and selling seven-figure businesses. So Jay helps coaches and experts with mastermind mastery, create and launch your high-end mastermind in 60 days and with this six-figure masterminds bootcamp. And so I'm more than happy to have him on our stage to share with us his amazing talk and how we can benefit from it for our business. Jay, our virtual stage is all yours. All right, sorry, I wasn't sure if I was unmuted there. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, glad to be here tonight uh, at EIN. This is my first time talking to this network and group, um, but I, you'll learn a little bit about my story. Uh, I'm, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time. Um, so welcome entrepreneurs. I'm always happy to hang out with other entrepreneurs. Uh, so for, for those who are at least on camera, just give me a, a show of hands. Who, who's familiar with ChatGPT and, and you've heard all the buzz about ChatGPT and it can solve all your problems and right, so a lot of people talking about it now and, and how it can help you in business. But let me ask you this. Has anyone ever had ChatGPT smile at you? No? Anyone ever gotten a hug from ChatGPT? Of course not. And as my friend and mentor Jennifer Huff would say, ChatGPT cannot connect to consciousness and infinite wisdom. So I don't think we have to worry about humanity disappearing because of ChatGPT and AI in the future, because humanity is just that. It's about human and humans connection. And that's really what I want to talk about tonight. So um, I assume you're all entrepreneurs if you're here or entrepreneurial or want to be an entrepreneur. So <clears throat> I'm going to address this. Uh, my Most of my comments tonight around uh, uh, my target market, which is primarily coaches, speakers, authors, experts, healers, um, people who are solopreneurs often um, and, and putting themselves out there and leading some kind of a tribe. But there are other applications for masterminds, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight, that are at a peer level 
Um, it's really important for entrepreneurs to be in masterminds with other entrepreneurs, even if it's not for financial gain. However, my emphasis is going to be talking about how you can also uh, use it to build your business uh, and, and have a tremendous uh, revenue source from creating mastermind or what I call hybrid programs. So um, let me uh, jump in here and um, talk about uh, the, you know, the, the earlier this year, the uh, U.S. Surgeon General uh, declared an epidemic for our country. It had nothing to do with the virus. It had nothing to do with the disease. The epidemic that was declared by our U.S. Surgeon General, and, and I don't think this is just indicative of the U.S., I think it's probably worldwide, is it's an epidemic of loneliness. And certainly COVID had something to do with that perhaps, but if you just think of going out in public and sitting in a restaurant full of people who are, are not talking to each other, but are sitting there staring at their phones, or God forbid you've been to a party with people under 30 years old lately and seen that most of the interaction is still with their phones even while they're at a party. So here's how I wanna connect this epidemic of loneliness to our businesses as entrepreneurs and our uh, coaching businesses and, and, and our uh, as leaders uh, in the entrepreneurial community. Um, when you look at people who start a, a solopreneur or coaching business or, or business as an expert, <clears throat> often we all start with one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's you can have great impact working one-on-one -on -one with people, make you know unbelievable life transformations, but it's not scalable. Often then we move to creating courses or group coaching programs where it's scalable now, you can leverage your time, but you see a drastic drop off in implementation and results for your clients. Anyone ever delivered a group coaching program or been in a group coaching program and had this guy in the program? <laughs> This is the kind of, you know, drop off you get when you move from one on one to leverage your time and start working with uh, larger uh, groups. <clears throat> and there's a lot of problems with just the general concept of group coaching. One is you get people at different levels in the same program. So, you know, the people at the top feel like you're dumbing the content down for, to, to meet the people at the bottom and vice versa. The other thing is that it's limited to a one to guru relationship. <clears throat> and again, I ask you if you've ever been in any kind of a group coaching program, did you other, ever meet the other participants in the program as you were going through the program or even by the end of the program? Often, again, your only relationship is still to the expert guru, coach, leader, or mentor of the program. The other thing with group programs is they're often just content driven. And, you know, what happens when you run out of content? You know, my biggest fear, if someone said to me, Jay, create a 12-month uh, group coaching program would be, oh my God, I have to come up with 12 months of content. The other problem is retention. You start to see drop-off in group programs, again, because of some of these issues we've just talked about above, and there becomes an issue of what happens after. Group programs are often three months, maybe six months max. And then what do you do with that client who loves you at that point beyond that group program? So that's why most really successful seven, eight-figure coaches, experts, authors, speakers end up creating high-end mastermind programs because you can have, they're scalable, plus you can have massive impact at as much and sometimes even more impact than when you're working one-on-one -on -one with people. So if you are a coach, speaker, author, healer, course creator, would your followers or would your tribe want a safe, trusted, confidential space to discuss their most challenging business or personal issues? Would they want a community where everyone shared mutual respect and were, were equally motivated to the group success as to their own? And would they want a group of like-minded peers to collaborate with and get supported by. Everybody 
most of your followers would, would sign up for that, right? So <clears throat> when people think of a mastermind, these are the terms that are usually associated, um, uh, coaching, uh, accountability, collaborations, support, guru, mentor, peer group, et cetera. But to me, this is what a mastermind's really about. It's about connection. It is about helping solve that issue of the isolation and the loneliness and the disconnection that we feel from the world and, and our communities. So comfort and confidentiality and community are all, to me, the words that, that more closely resemble what a mastermind can be. And often I, I look at these word salads and I say, it looks like kind of like a womb. And I often use that analogy for a mastermind. It's like a womb of people, it gets a little squishy with 10 or 12 people in that womb, but you want to be around people who you feel supported by, who you are wake up every day and go, man, I want to hang out with those people. That's what a great mastermind is. So when we're talking about creating masterminds, to me, we're literally saving the world from isolation, loneliness, and digital disconnection. And I'll tell you more of my story about how I've done that uh, in a minute. So let's talk about what makes a great mastermind. Um, when we're talking about masterminds, let me give you a little definition here too. So mastermind in the true Napoleon Hill sense of the word, you know, the concept was originated when you put, you know, one person with one brain in a room with another person with a brain and you create a third brain. And then you multiply that by eight or 10 people in a room and you've got a group brain or what I call the group brain trust. So that's sort of a true mastermind is a smaller group of eight to 14 people. And the reason it's that size is that in mastermind meetings, you do not want lurkers. You do not want that guy on the couch. You want people who are there to participate and, and everybody gets a voice at every meeting. And if you have a true mastermind of 20 people, you're gonna need a five or six hour meeting in order for everyone to get an equal voice in the meetings. So that's why the true mastermind, and I'll talk about hybrid programs in a minute. So what makes a great mastermind is creating a supportive community, the members forming deep relationships with each other. And that's really the key ingredient right there. Accountability and implementation, real life-changing transformations, mutual respect and confidentiality is also critically important as well as creating a safe, trusted space for vulnerability. And lastly, structure and direction. I've seen many masterminds over the years fall apart because they lacked structure and direction. They ended up kind of just being a coffee clutch of, you know, even if it's an entrepreneur mastermind, a bunch of entrepreneurs getting together and BSing about their business and, and you know, talking about some of their issues in an unstructured format. And lastly, that thing I mentioned where you create the group brain trust. So as I mentioned, most of the most successful coaches on the planet have high-end masterminds. You'll recognize some of these uh, on this screen. Amon Agai, of course, is the founder of EIN. Um, these, guys, these people on these screens run high-end masterminds. The range of their masterminds is between fifteen and eighty-five thousand dollars per year to join one of these masterminds. But here's the thing: some of these aren't even true masterminds. In our industry of coaches, experts, gurus, speakers, etc., <clears throat> often people create a group coaching program and they slap a mastermind label on it because it sounds sexier and they can get more money for it. That's okay. I'm not out here to preach that that shouldn't be done. There's what I call hybrid programs, which are something in between a group coaching and a mastermind. But the point is that most high-end coaches create these, uh, or most successful coaches create these programs. And often people think that 
the only way you can get to that program is that ascension ladder. I've got to have a, a low price course and then a medium price course and then a group coaching program. And then I can finally have my high end, high ticket mastermind. Well, here's an example, Debbie White. She, her entry level program is her $14,000 mastermind. She does not have anything lower than that in terms of a course or, or program that she offers or coaching package. Now <clears throat> she's, you know, it, it's taken her a while to build this to a seven figure business, just offering these masterminds. It requires a very high touch, personalized approach with people in the nurture process and in the prospecting process to get them to jump immediately into a $14,000 program. So the point of this is that there's a reason why some of the most successful coaches on the planet have run these types of programs. As I said, high impact, you can have as good, sometimes even better results for your clients in terms of transformations in these programs, but high revenue as well. When you talk to some of these seven and eight figure coaches, they'll tell you that 80% of their income comes from these high end programs. It may not look that way when you go to their websites and kind of get the get first introduced to them because they're offering lower price programs perhaps at the beginning, um, and it just seems like man they must be selling a gazillion of those you know courses or programs, um, but in fact most of their revenue comes from these high end high touch programs. So for me. Um, you know, I'm at an age where I can barely remember what I ate for breakfast yesterday, but I vividly remember 25 years ago walking out of my very first mastermind meeting and saying, oh my God, I finally found my tribe. So that was 25 years ago. And the reason that I got involved in a mastermind is because I was an entrepreneur at that time. And I had grown, I had my first business, I started from credit cards and grew it pretty successfully, pretty quickly to a million dollars in revenue, but I kind of got stuck there. And I ended up joining an organization called the Young Entrepreneurs Organization, it's kind of like an EIN type uh, global organization. And I got my very first mastermind. And I had no idea that it would change my life uh, from that point. Let me back up a little bit and tell you why it was so impactful in my life. So first of all, my father died suddenly of a heart attack when I was 10 years old. And I didn't exactly react, you know, maturely like any 10 year old would uh, for some that kind of trauma. I, uh, my reaction was to kind of withdraw. Uh, uh, I disconnected, I isolated myself um, uh, from life. And it, the, those, that reaction also, you know, kind of led to a pretty misspent youth and issues with drugs and alcohol in my teens and twenties and that kind of thing. The point was that, you know, I was pretty isolated. I was kind of that lone wolf, some anger issues. Um, and, you know, but maybe that's what prompted me to start my own first business and, and glad on my own was, was, so it might've had that double-edged sword. So as I said, I started the first business, got to a million dollars, got stuck, got in this first mastermind. The first mastermind I was in, it happened to be all men entrepreneurs. I've been in many masterminds with men and women, um, but this first one was all men. And we all joined that mastermind to become better entrepreneurs and to grow our businesses. I was shocked that within four to five months when we first got together as a group, we I was watching grown men cry in these meetings because in that short of time, we transitioned from business issues to personal issues. And over the years uh, that I've been in Masterminds 25 years, I mean, I have gotten some of the most vulnerable conversations and gotten into some of the most you know, delicate issues that any any human can face um, as a result of being in masterminds. And I'll tell you how important that was for me, um, largely because of the support I had from my masterminds. Um, I actually joined many of them at, in the Young Entrepreneurs Organization. I love them so much. 
uh, I grew my business and ended up uh, at 200 employees, 10 million in annual revenue, and I sold the business in 2004. Things were pretty good. I bought some businesses, I traveled, I invested in a lot of different things. Things were going pretty well. <clears throat> Anybody ever had a position in their life or you know, a period in their life where things were going really well and then some outside force comes and screws it all up? Well, there was this little thing called the worldwide financial crisis of 2008 to 2010. And one by one, I watched everything I owned go down the toilet. It was literally like, if you can imagine standing over a toilet bowl, a big one, and watching it swirl down for two years, item by item, business by business, including my marriage, everything went down the toilet. By 2012, I was bankrupt. So I quite literally went from being a multimillionaire living in a mansion to living in my friend's basement without a car. I spent five months in that basement, literally, but I spent more like five years in that basement figuratively because I did the exact same thing as I did when my father died when I was 10. I withdrew, I became isolated, I disconnected from this huge entrepreneurial network I had spent 15 years building. I was president of the Young Entrepreneurs Organization. And I, dealing with all that shame and embarrassment and humiliation and loss of identity, I figuratively stayed in that basement for like five years. Finally, I got to a point, things, things actually got worse than when I first hit that basement. Uh, a few years later, things actually got worse. I hit sort of my lowest point. And I realized that I, I needed to do something to pull myself out of it. And one of the things was that I've got to get back to hanging out with entrepreneurs, helping entrepreneurs, and getting to that level of connection that I had had uh, in all of those years in masterminds. And that's what led me when I felt like I finally had enough resilience to hang my coaching shingle again and put myself out there and put my name on it and deal with all the rejection that we face as entrepreneurs. Um, I came back and, and said, this is what I want to do is to help people create, get into masterminds base level when, and then create masterminds as a revenue generating source uh, for um, your business and, and, and for how to scale your business. So I wanna talk about that. Um, and I wanna you know, ask all of you if, if I have convinced you at this point that masterminds are a good idea, if you think it's appropriate to, to create a program like this for your business, then I want to ask you to Set an intention. <clears throat> so if you have, if you're if you're a coach, an expert, speaker, whatever, and you have a $1,500 coaching package or a $1,500 course, you need 67 clients to reach six figures in revenue from that $1,500 package. Let me ask you this. How long would it take? If you set an intention today, so this mastermind thing sounds good. I like this idea of hanging out with people and creating a womb and, and getting some really badass entrepreneurs or, or, or other people in my industry or experts together to create this kind of uh, this, this uh, womb-like atmosphere and, and this uh, mastermind. How long would it take you to find just nine people who know, love, and trust you. Not know, like, and trust you, that's base level, but know, love, and trust you. And would be willing to pay $1,000 a month to hang out with you and some other really smart people who all have similar challenges, who all have similar frustrations, and all have similar aspirations and goals, and help each other achieve life-changing transformations nine people instead of 67. And let me put that in a different perspective. The amount of work and expense and effort and systems that you need in place to get 67 clients 
is a hell of a lot more than getting nine people. Nine people you can find doing without even a fancy sales funnel. You can do this grassroots. So you might be thinking, okay, I'm not Tony Robbins, right? I'm, I don't feel at this point like I'm in a position where I could command someone to pay me a thousand a month or 10,000 a year to be in my fancy mastermind. So let's do some math. Let me give you some examples of how this does. You don't have to be Tony Robbins. This doesn't have to be that simple. Does everybody see the spreadsheet? Yep. Um, this is a spreadsheet I created for coaches. And this first tab here is about pricing tiers and, and raising prices. That's not what we're going to look at. I want to show you this one, which is about masterminds and group programs. So let's say, okay, I, I don't think I can, I, I'm not even sure I want to do a true mastermind. I might want to do a hybrid program where I trickle down some of the masterminding techniques into a group program. So I'm still getting more impact and creating relationships and getting better retention. So let's say you had a group program that you would run for uh, six months and you would charge $647. So about $3,900 total for six months, okay? Instead of 10,000 for a year. Just to give you perspective, you'd need 13, 13 people to create, uh, oh, sorry, for uh, you're running that for six months, so you're running it two times a year. So you need 13 people in each six month program to get to $100,000 in revenue. Again, your total, if you see down here in the bottom, the total you need is 26 people instead of 67 people to get your $100,000 in revenue. And let's say you wanted to do a mastermind. And again, $1,000 is probably too much. So let's say you thought you could get uh, $547 a month for 12 months. And again, you put uh, 12 people in that program and one time a year, and there's another $80,000 in revenue. So I'm not going to belabor this point, but I wanted to see you give you the sense of understanding that it's when you do programs like this, when you create a high high end, high impact program, and get fewer people. You look here, one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year in revenue, and again, if you had a fifteen hundred dollar course, you need one hundred twenty people, one hundred twenty different clients at a fifteen hundred dollar course, whereas you could do that with thirty eight people in these two examples. So for everyone um, at the end of this, I'll share this spreadsheet with you. I'll, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I can put it in the chat, but I can email it to you if, if you'd like it and you can play with these numbers yourself. Um, so I'll get that to you uh, later here as, as we get towards the end of this program. All right, so I hope that makes sense and I hope you can see how um, easy it is to get this math to start adding up in different ways. So why would you wanna consider creating one of these programs? Obviously leveraging your most valuable asset, create a high ticket option for the fans who love you, less reliance on content, recurring revenue and stickiness. Stickiness is mean how long they stay in a program. I was in one mastermind for 17 years. Stop selling yourself short. Be the leader you are meant to be. Give yourself a raise. And most importantly, create human connection. In a digital world, things are, our lives are increasingly cutter, cluttered and superficial. You know, I can tell you that in my experience in masterminds, I've developed deeper relationships with some of the people in my masterminds and my own family. And, and I say this on recorded uh, events like this, so they hear me say that and they, and they realize that that's also true. Not my kids, my kids are the exception. So what I've done is I took all of this 25 years of experience in creating masterminds and created an eight step system to create and launch a mastermind. This is a, a course, live course uh, program that I run a couple of times a year. The next one's in September. 
Um, I'm not here to talk about that tonight, but I just wanted to let you know that that's uh, one of the things that I do. So the first step you want to take, if this idea intrigues you, is to, is to look at what program that you want to create. And I, one of my pet peeves in the coaching expert industry are people who find one way to do something and, they, and it's successful and they do it successfully, but then they just teach that one way to everybody else who follows along. I don't believe in that. I think part of the magic to creating these kind of programs is to find the exact program that is takes advantage of all of your strengths and 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 uh, makes the sense for for incorporating it into the rest of your business model. So the first question is why would people follow you? So first of all, you want to look at as a leader, what can I provide to the people that would be in this group and the people who would be paying me to participate in this? So one is access or influence. So this is this is one type of mastermind where all you you don't even have to be the top leader or top guru in your industry or in your field of expertise. But if you're able to bring together some of the top thought leaders, some of the top experts and the top gurus in your industry, you can create a mastermind and get paid for it. And there's lots of people who have done this successfully. Basically, what they're you're giving them is access and, and access to other experts, access to influence within your industry. Um, and it's not that difficult to do that. You think about that, that nine to 10 people thing. If you can go out and identify three or four experts like this and get them interested, then you go talk to another three or four and say, you know what, I've got so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. I think they're going to go for it. If they're in, are you in? And you can easily build this kind of a group. This can be done at a pure peer level as well. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that I would, I would talk about this in case this, you know, creating a paid mastermind isn't uh, in your doesn't fit in your business model and, and with what you're doing professionally. There's lots of peer-to-peer -peer masterminds that you can create. In fact, I just created one in the coaching industry for people I consider who are my peers, where I didn't do it to, to uh, as a revenue generation thing, because this is a true peer. There is no expert or leader or guru. I'm the facilitator, but it, it's all my peers, I charge them to be in it because you should, everyone should have skin in the game. So they take it seriously, but it's not a huge uh, dollar amount because I want this to be that pure peer-to-peer -peer thing. And I'm throwing that out there because if you ever want to follow up with me on how to create a peer-to-peer -peer mastermind uh, for, for yourself, I'm happy to talk to you about that. But again, come back to if they're paying you to be in a program like this, what can you as a leader provide? Access and influence, training and expertise, coaching, facilitation, support, or accountability. And so as you think about, if I were gonna embrace this idea and, and go down this path, what would I create? That This is where you wanna start in terms of where are your strengths? So for me, for instance, facilitation is my strength. And if I could wake up every morning and, and run two mastermind meetings and not have to do anything else in my business, I would be living my dream life. I am okay at coaching. I'm okay at training and, and that kind of thing. But I really, my superpower is the facilitation, right? Accountability, not my not my strong suit, right? So you look at these issues, say, where, where am I strongest at? Where can I help the people most with? Where can I help provide long-term transformations? We're, we're all entrepreneurs here, so we're, we're talking in entrepreneurial terms, but masterminds are actually really perfectly suited for life skills, life transformations. So you know, if you're a trauma person, a health person, a mindset person, most of the issues people have around those things do, are not things that can be solved in a six-week course or a three-month group coaching program. They're really best suited for a longer-term, you know, 12-month program or just an ongoing program. 
So what are your strengths? And what's the big promise of the group when you pull it together? Is it to create a lifestyle change like I just mentioned? Is it for business growth? We're all just going to get together and help each other all grow our businesses um, as business experts and other entrepreneurs. Is it some kind of a lead access where you're pulling together some of the top people in your industry or, or uh, in your situation? And then what outcomes can you provide? So I'm always huge on ROI, return on investment. And I always think the success of anything that we sell as entrepreneurs or sell is in the marketplace depends on the ROI and how well you can convey the ROI to someone who's considering joining you, signing up, uh, getting, getting involved with you as a coach, expert, or leader. So it's important to be able to articulate what those outcomes are. So exclusive access to, implementation of. Now, here's a perfect example of you, you might have already a six or eight week course program or, or coaching package, and you've taught them certain things in those six or eight weeks. Well, now let's talk about implementation. Let's take that and put it on steroids by taking everything they learned in the first program and now adding in other people who also went through that program who have similar aspirations and similar goals and um, make it work uh, longer term shared expertise in something, you're gonna help them launch something, you're gonna provide ongoing support or transformation around or accountability to, support to create something. So these are all things that are important if you envision thinking, what kind of program would I create? The next step after you think about what you'd create is then you start to look at who would fill it and identifying your niche and avatar is really very critically important in masterminds. In fact, um, I'll, I'll pause here and, and talk about that a little bit. Another reason that masterminds fall apart or don't work is because there's not parity within the group. So what I mean by parity within the group is there has to be commonality. It doesn't mean that everybody has to be exactly in the same place in their business, in their life, whatever that is, but there has to be some similarities around the challenges, fears, and frustrations, and similarities around the aspirations and goals. I'll give you an example of this. If you create an entrepreneur mastermind, you do not want to have an entrepreneur is doing $200,000 in the year, a year revenue in the same mastermind as an entrepreneur doing 20 million in revenue. And it's not because they don't have the same problems. I've owned nine, business, nine, nine different businesses and six different industries. Business all has the same problems. We have people problems. We have sales and marketing problems. We have cash flow problems. We have process problems. Those are universal no matter what type of business you're running. But where that difference comes in between the 200,000 person and a $20 million person is mutual respect. The, the, the people in your mastermind have to, they don't have to even like each other necessarily, although that's always better, but they have to at least have mutual respect. And that comes into play with things just like the attendance, showing up, showing up on time. There has to be an understanding that if you're late to a mastermind meeting where we're all relatively equal in this group, then it's disrespectful to everyone else in the group. We're just as busy as you are. You don't have, you know, unless it's an emergency, be here on time, be present, put cell phones down. So developing the right culture in a mastermind and the protocols for the, uh, that, as I said earlier, the structure and direction is critically important as well. So to wrap this up, the most important things in just in, it, in the first step in terms of thinking about doing this is what kind of program what you create, what takes advantage of your unique leadership skills, and what kind of outcomes and ROI can you provide. So if you'd like to find out more about 
developing programs like this, I have two things that I can offer uh, for you, um, and they're both free. One is that you can take the Mastermind Ready Scorecard. So this is an assessment, and I will put this in the chat, and I assume that we can also follow up with these links uh, after this as well. Um, we'll put this in the chat, uh, and this is an assessment that you can do where it's going to give you an idea of how ready you are or not to add a program like this to your business. So it'll it'll identify with you your, your strengths and weaknesses in terms of how ready you are to, to create a program like this. Um, and people usually find it's, it's pretty eye-opening. The second thing I'll offer you, and this is kind of last minute notice because it's this coming weekend, is I will invite you to my Six Figure Masterminds Bootcamp. This is a three-day event where what we do is we, we vision and create a, a specific plan for the program that you can launch. So we go into detail about what kind of program, who's going to fill it, and then what you're going to deliver as part of this three-day event, um, which is uh, this coming weekend. It's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, this is a, an event that people are paying $147 for um, to attend, just as it kind of like I said earlier, so they have skin in the game. But anyone who is part of the CIN uh, network is um, offering this. You can come for free. Um, it's this Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 11 to 6 Eastern each day. I know these three day events are grueling. Um, if but if you have an idea that this kind of program is right for you and your business, I highly in, encourage you to clear the weekend and try to come to this. Um, I've ha had co comments that this is one of the best, if not the best three-day event people have come to uh, that are on these three-day virtual events. Again, I know it's grueling. I know it's last minute, but I just want to throw that out there. Um, so between the... the um, and I'll put this link in, in the code in the chat as well. Uh, and then the last thing is, so code and chat uh, in, are in there. Um, wait, hang on. That's the wrong button. And then the last thing is, if you want to just reach out to me and have a discussion, I'll put my email also in the chat. It's pretty simple. It's j at fairbrother.com. And so um, there you have it. So you've got the uh, Mastermind Ready Scorecard. That's the assessment that you can take um, that uh, will give you an idea of where, where you are, holes, where you're already strong, where you might have weaknesses to create a program like this for your business, and then the boot camp this weekend. If you're not able to make it this weekend, I will be offering this boot camp again in November. And that's it. I think we can open it up for Q&A. Awesome. Thank you for that informative and valuable talk, Jay. So now let's head on to our question and answer portion. Excuse me. We encourage the audience to ask questions by raising their hands on their screen or using the raise hand feature here on Zoom. And if you're called by the speaker, we will unmute you. Hi, Yvonne. I just want to say hello. Go ahead, Seven. Jay, you, you mentioned uh, a $1,500 um, content, pro, uh, or $1,500 worth of content, right? Okay. When you say content, are you talking presentation, or are you talking uh, content that would constantly grow? Like, okay, you know, the first presentation would be, boom, okay, are you talking, Mike, uh, every four weeks, a new presentation, or are you talking one that you deliver on and on and then you change your audience with that same pro, uh, program. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good question. So 
the the fifteen hundred old was kind of an example, right? Like if you follow um, Amana Guy, who founded this net network, his um, his sort of you know model for coaching is you've got your free lead magnets, your ways to get in front of people and get them to raise their hand, and then you've got a signature course, which he usually identifies as between typically between five hundred and two thousand. And that course is usually six or eight weeks long. And then you build a higher end program on top of that. It could be a mastermind. It could be a hybrid group coaching program. It could be a high end one on one. Like I do, one of the things I do is I do a high end mentorship uh, for people that I am convinced and, and they're convinced that we can create a six figure plus program together. And I work with them one on one as one of my high end authors. Right. So, you know, low price program, signature program, 500 to 2000 high end program. What I, what I was trying to do with, in the example, though, was because a lot of people are in situations where they would do a course. They, you know, might do a fifteen hundred dollar coaching package, you know, like you get three or four sessions for fifteen hundred bucks. And then, you, you know, you either have to keep renewing them. Right. So th that's the other beauty of these types of programs is in the in in our expert industry, um, revenue peaks and valleys is very common, right? You get a bunch of clients at once, or you launch a course and you get fifteen students, and then you don't launch the course again for three months. You got no income, right? Whereas these type of programs give you a recurring income base because you're signing people up for six months, twelve months, or even ongoing. You know, like it, it's a thousand dollars a month until you decide to leave, which you know, like in my in one of my cases was seventeen years later. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You may also. Um... Unmute yourself if you want to speak up and have any question. It's funny, Jay. You know what? I I do I do what you say in my business. I have I have uh, I build conventions like Tony Robbins. I built his his presentation. When I say build, I take a group of gentlemen in or ladies and gentlemen, and we build physically build the screens, the stage, the audio, the, all that. And then we walk away, Tony brings his crew in, they do their magic, and then they leave. And we tear it down and put it back in a truck and away it goes. Um, but I take people who have minimal skills and teach them a skill that they have to be accountable for by other people who already know that skill. So, um, and then I but, I, but I charge a client one price and then I charge the people I teach I don't charge them, but like I will hire you for $25 an hour, but I will charge my client 50 an hour, right? So, right. but I will teach my employees those things that you had, like from, from the leadership standpoint, be on time, be present. This is what we need to get done. Anybody who doesn't know what they're doing, ask, because there are people around you who know. If they don't, ask me. We go in, we build a project. So we're all even on the same mindset. We want to get this project built in a timely manner, safely. Okay. So, yep. you know, those are all the things. And, and, and people come to me, they gravitate to me because A, they get to make some money doing what they didn't, yep. they couldn't do before. And now they want to know, well, how can I get to the next level? Well, this guy makes this much. How do I get to that level? Well, you get to that level from your skills what we can pay you for. So it's it's kind of, uh, I, I'm i interested, I'm, this is interesting to see that people will pay almost for a blind faith or a leap of faith into a, a mindset. Yeah, one of the, one of the, one of the harder things about creating these type of programs is the sales and marketing because it is, leap of faith is a perfect term because it does take someone a leap of faith first yeah. they have to you know know love and trust you enough to to take that leap of faith then they have to believe that there's going to be real outcomes 
one of the things I didn't mention specifically, um, which is actually one of the easiest type of masterminds to create, is an industry-specific mastermind. So the, exa the example is that if you are a local or regional superstar in your industry, like let's say you've built this incredible plumbing business and you have no aspirations to take it national or, you know, compete nationally, you, you know, you can ha have be making you know a lot of money and created this great business and it's kind of running on autopilot now. It's not a lot of effort and time on your part to create a mastermind, get other plumbers from around the country to pay you ten or twenty thousand dollars a year to to be in a mastermind. And all you're doing is teaching them what you did to be the local regional superstar. Right. And that's one of the easiest masterminds to to create and, and run. Hmm. Yeah. Wayne, did you have a question? Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm intrigued by your model, Jay, especially with the part about um, uh, the human connection side of it, uh, because we certainly have gone through quite a transformation over the last few years, which has accelerated what was already starting. And, uh, you know, as we put it, we're kind of moving into the AI digital age from the industrial age. And before that, we had the agricultural age, but they both had huge human connection to them. And, uh, uh, you know, what's going on now? I'm, I'm, uh, I founded a human analytics company a number of years ago called the MindSuite. Uh, you, most of you probably have been on it at one point or another. We've had projects all over the world and, and very significant ones. And I'm really intrigued with some of the messaging around this because when you get a series of customers, in our case, because I think maybe the application might be a little different, but when we have a series of customers, it's usually the leadership group that's a part of it. And being able to bring in a leadership group that where there's good information about the challenges that they have with other leaders who are sharing similar challenges, that's kind of an interesting mastermind application. Is that something that you're familiar with or have done? I, I'm not sure I totally understood your example, but I can give you a, a couple of things that I know are, are close. So one is that within larger corporations, this is another model for masterminds, um, <clears throat> there's, there are people already out there who are creating internal uh, masterminds, peer masterminds within the corporation. So the idea is that you're taking, you know, the, all VPs in different departments that don't usually interact with each other or, and putting them in a peer mastermind or, you know, like people at a certain level, directors, across the corporation. And what that does is, you know, in corporations, you, you're 95% of the time, or maybe even higher, you're in a meeting, you've either got a superior in the meeting or a subordinate in the meeting, and it changes the conversation automatically. Yeah. So there's corporations that are out there, Google's doing this, um, Harvard Business School does it for their alumni, uh, where they create these internal masterminds uh, of true peer groups where um, and and they're paying facilitators to come in and and run these um, yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fascinating. It, you know, within the organizations, especially the larger ones, because there's a disconnect. Some people may not have even met. You know, and 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 there are differences between different areas, but they can leverage sort of the knowledge. And with a lot of the people that do the work have knowledge and ideas about how to improve things, but are rarely asked, you know, <laughs> they're lower down the system as they put it. Uh, so it, it's, it's kind of fascinating to package it a little bit differently than here, here's a sort of a, uh, here's a debrief on your research to here's a mastermind on how to make change based upon what's really happening, not what you think is happening. Right. It's, it's kind of an interesting combination. And then being able to bring together a series of leaders who have that open-mindedness to learn from each other as well in a mastermind situation, I think is kind of intriguing to me. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll be talking to you for sure. <laughs> so one of the um, examples that I usually use um, in the very first mastermind meeting that I joined, there was a, I was in the fundraising business at the time, and there was a guy in the group who makes um, precast concrete, which is the big planks that make up the flooring of large buildings and when I first joined the mastermind I was like I you know I, I can't learn anything from this guy like our businesses are just so completely different and opposite and what you learn is that we still have those similar problems and well, so the human element is common right so anyway yeah 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 
Yeah, so I don't think I've ever been in a mastermind meeting and I've been in thousands over 25 years. Um, I don't think I've ever been in a, a mastermind meeting where somebody didn't ask a question and I thought, man, I wouldn't even thought to ask that question. And mm -hmm. to me, that's the true power right there. It's not even so much the answers. It's the questions that people ask and challenge you with. And, and that's why my personal preference is for industry diverse masterminds versus, you know, a, a vertical because of that, because of that exact example where you get people thinking outside your own box. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. W one other quick question too. Um, uh, do you find that there's people assume what a mastermind is before they give you a chance to talk much about it? Do you ever have that sort of, and, and how do you break that if you do? Yeah, well, I'm usually in a situation like this where I can talk a little bit about the differences and that kind of thing. But you're right, people do have these preconceived notions. And again, especially in my industry and in the coaching expert industry, because there's lots of people that use that mastermind label on things that are nothing but like a mastermind. Yeah. Uh, so there is a bit of an education process. Um, and you know, where where I would start if I was having that conversation is is just to ask them, have you ever been in a mastermind or experienced one? And and get their feedback before I start, you know, talking about what it is or isn't. Yeah, oh, that's true. And get get them to kind of share what their view is so you know what you're dealing with. Yep. And, yeah. Have you been to a Tony? Have you been through any Tony Robbins programs? I have not. Uh I, you know. I went to a couple many years back, but not in any of the intensive ones. Yeah. Okay. So you haven't done a fire walk? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've done two and uh, it's life changing. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Jay, I have two yeah. questions. One is, um, what do you think is the, a good size for a mastermind? You know, like you said, if you've got, you know, 15 people in there, it's going to take you hours. Um, and so I'm just curious. Yeah. So, um, and, and this is, we go through this all in detail in my eight week program. So if the ideal size for that true mastermind is like eight to 12, and you're talking about, you know, a two to three hour or, or most four hour meeting. Um, if you want to do something that's what I call hybrid, where, you know, based on your price point or, or you just, you know, you want to put 20 or 30 people in a program, then the ways that you can make it mastermindish are with uh, breakout rooms. Um, you can create pods of people working together. I don't, I don't believe in accountability partners, because if you end up with an accountability partner, like that guy on the couch, mm -hmm. it's a, it's actually a negative more than it's a, you know, it's not even neutral. So I like put pot people in the pods of three or four people for it to work on, you know, exercises together, accountability, use breakout rooms and do things where I, I use a phrase called forced participation, which sounds a little harsh, but it's memorable that way. Whereas instead of like this, where we just have open Q&A, whoever can raise their hand, you do certain things where you just go around the room and everyone has to participate. And if you do it, you know, like I do this thing called a taste of masterminds. It's like a sample session for how to run a mastermind. And I'll do two of those forced participation things. Then when I do the third thing and it's open, whoever wants to, you know, participate in Q&A or whatever, everybody in the room talks. Because if they feel like they already know each other, there's already a comfort level established because I brought out the introverts and I had everybody participate early on. Um, and the other, so I guess in my mind, I was thinking kind of the eight, the figure eight as the number of people. Um, the other thing is I, I've heard that it's really important that you curate the group so that, you know, um, and I'm wondering if part of that curation can be the kind of, um, you know, if you're doing a group from people that have been through your programs, they've got a certain sense of how you operate. If that can be a strong kind of curation thing that you're using. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your prime prospects to join a high-end program are people who have done a lower-end program of yours or, or done some coaching okay. with you or, or that kind of thing, experience your services or transformation. Um, so that's where you want to start. 
And in fact, you can, when you start there too, I mean, th th that's another reason I love these types of programs is because it's very, it can be very grassroots. It, it can be a lot of referrals. You get three people to sign up and give them an incentive to find each find another person to, to grow the group. But the curation is a perfect word, first of all, and it's critically important because one bad apple in a small group like that of eight to 10 can really mess with the group dynamic. Thanks, Yvonne. Those are really great questions. So <clears throat> if anybody else um, does have any questions or doesn't have any questions, uh, we can move on to our last part of the event, our takeaways and gratitude circle. So if anybody would like to share their takeaways that they had on this event, or if you wanna give your appreciation to our speaker for today, please feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand. I will say thank you. This is the first time that I've, I've been to this group and I came specifically to hear Jay and I was not disappointed. So thank you very much. And thank you for the great um, coupon. Um, I'm definitely going to make room to come. Awesome. I'd love to see you there, Yvonne. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Great insights. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah, I hope we talk again. Yeah, we will. We really do appreciate your talk, Jay. And by the way, you've mentioned earlier about the spreadsheet. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank yeah, you. You want to share a reminder? Um, am I going to be able to add it? You know? Yep. Yeah. I uh, is it a file or a link? It is a file. It looks like I can do it, but I. I had it open still, so I got to close it and then. And maybe if anybody else has any further questions, they can personally ask Jay on his email. Is that correct? At jay at fairbrother.com. Yep. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. All right. You're welcome. The file is right here. You might want to take a few minutes to uh, download the file so that um, you can test out the numbers yourselves. And so, you're, if you're welcome to post that file in a, in a replay or whatever. Right, yes. I will also um, post that file in our replay page. So I'm downloading it right now. So again, thank you so much, everyone, for showing up at today's event. So our... Um, Next event will be on next week, um, sa same day and time, Tuesdays, 4 p.m. Pacific. That will be, the next one will be on July 18th. And to sign up for that, you can go to this URL that I will put in the chat box, wherein we have our website and, oh, sorry, let me just, There you go. You can see all our upcoming events there, and you can also sign up for the specific event that you want to register in. Okay. So once more, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Jay, for spending your precious time with us today. And everyone, we will see you on our next event. Take care.